Today I want to share with you how to clean the Instant Pot the right way. All the do's and don'ts for a basic cleaning and a deep cleaning. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, for those of you who have been with me a while, you know that whenever I start an Instant Pot project, I always call the customer service line or I really scan their website. And I've learned a lot about the right way to clean the Instant Pot at the basic level as well as the more deep cleaning level. For dinner tonight, I used my Instant Pot to make a vegetable soup. Actually, a super mineral broth <laughs> vegetable soup, which I'll link to in the iCards and in the description below. It's really nutritious. But the bottom line is, I now need to clean my liner. Now, cleaning this liner is very easy. Basically, all we want to do is wash this in some warm, soapy water and use a non-abrasive scrubber to get any little bits that need to be released. And if you have some little bits that are stuck on the bottom or if you just have some discoloration, uh, Instant Pot recommends that you can use something like uh, Barkeeper's Friend, I think that's what it's called. It's sort of a white liquid that's a non-abrasive cleanser. You can use that uh, with your non-abrasive scrub and loosen bits of food and any discoloration that may have occurred on the bottom or the sides. Now I took this over to my sink and I just washed it with some warm soapy water and a non-abrasive scrubber. I'll overlay a picture so you can see exactly what I did, but really it's no different than washing out any stainless steel pan that you may have. And then for the lid, I basically did the same thing. Put a little tiny bit of uh, dish soap, a lot of nice hot water, used my non-abrasive scrub and gave it a real good rinse. And then you just want to give it a good shake out and make sure all the water drains out. Now what about this ceiling ring, this plastic thing that goes all around the lid of your Instant Pot? I made the soup that I made tonight had a lot of garlic in it and I can really smell that in the ceiling ring. Now the folks at Instant Pot say that the smell that can accumulate in your ring shouldn't transfer to your food. That's good news. Now, some people like to have two rings just as a safety precaution, one for savory foods and one for sweet foods. But say you just have one and you don't like the fact that it does have an odor, even though they say at Instant Pot it won't transfer to your other foods. You would just rather have it have more of a fresh, clean smell to it. You can remove this ceiling ring and you have a couple of options. You can put this into your dishwasher. And by the way, you can also put this, the liner, into your dishwasher. So it's a very easy cleanup. But if you find that even after the ceiling ring has been in your dishwasher, that it still has a smell to it, you can take another option for cleaning it. What you wanna do is just wedge your fingers under the, the ceiling ring a little bit, and it'll pull out very easily. So as I said, you get the ring out, you can pop it in your dishwasher or take the other option. And for that, you're going to need a bin, a little wash bin, or you can do this in your sink, but I'll do it in this wash bin. You're going to want to go ahead and you're going to want to put your ring into this wash bin. Then you're going to want to get some white distilled vinegar, the 5% acidity, the regular one that you can find at your grocery store is fine. And you're going to want to pour that right into the bin, into this wash bin, to the point where your uh, ceiling ring is covered. Now you can let your ceiling ring soak for as little as 30 minutes or even overnight if it had a particularly strong odor to it. Once you feel it's soaked a sufficient amount of time, you can remove it from the vinegar, give it a real good rinse, dry it well, and then put it back into your lid. Now when you removed your ceiling ring, if it had any food that was caked on it, you can certainly wash it first before you give it the vinegar, vinegar soak. You can use a little scrub brush, a little toothbrush, anything that you need to use to get off any food that may be caked on it. Then give it a real good rinse and then put it down into your vinegar. 
And now before you put your clean liner and your lid back in place, you can just take a lint-free cloth like a microfiber cloth and kind of give your outside Instant Pot a once over. You can clean your panel and this is just with water on it. You can add a little bit of vinegar if you want, uh, but if it's not particularly dirty, you don't need to worry about that. You can just rub, clean it up like this, and you can just go around in the rim here and get any water or little particles of food that may have accumulated or fallen in here when you were you know, using the Instant Pot. And if for any reason you have something that's a little stuck on, you can just go in here with a, a little fine brush or a little toothbrush to loosen it. And then you can take your damp cloth and just give your inside a little once over. Then with everything dry and clean, you can go ahead and put your liner back in and then you can put your lid back on. Now Instant Pot recommends that it can be very helpful to store it upside down like this if you're not going to be using it right away because this helps allow the lid to air out and especially that uh, ceiling ring. Now what if you decide you want to do a deep cleaning of your Instant Pot? Say the inside has gotten a lot of hard water stains. Sometimes people will notice that it's developed a blue tinge uh, and as in addition to that calcium buildup from hard water. Uh, they'll find that their uh, ceiling ring really has an odor to it. So what do you do then? Well, this is so easy to take care of and you can do it all in one fell swoop. You're just gonna put your liner in like this and then you're gonna fill your liner with two cups of the white distilled vinegar. Whether it's a six quart or an eight quart, you're still gonna fill it with two cups of the white distilled vinegar. And now I'm putting in my second cup. Now this is all that Instant Pot recommends putting in. You may see some folks put in baking soda. You may see some folks add dish soap, uh, but Instant Pot recommends just white vinegar. Uh, the problem with things like baking soda and soap, they can become very frothy and frothy when you go to do the quick release, which is what you're going to do with the vinegar in it, can cause not only a mess, but can also cause a clog. And you don't, there's not as much control over what type of soap you're using as opposed to the standardization of vinegar. So there's always the potential that whatever dish soap that you may add into that and it froths up under pressure and then you do the quick release, you think, oh, I'm cleaning my vent. You may actually wind up clogging your vent. So the safest way to do this as recommended by Instant Pot is just with vinegar. And then after this cooks under pressure and we do the quick release, you're gonna have that wonderful vinegar come through as steam and clean your vent for you. Now on some models, you can take all these parts off and you can then soak them in a vinegar a solution. Uh, but I find just doing it like this the easiest way and the safest way. I'm always worried that I may not put things back on correctly. So, this is going to be perfect, and it's exactly what's recommended by the folks at Instant Pot. Well, I went ahead and plugged my Instant Pot in because I did have it unplug unplugged when we were cleaning it. And now we're going to go ahead and put our lid on and then lock it into place. You'll hear a little music when you put the lid on, and then you'll hear more music when you lock it into place. Now we're going to use the steam option, and that is a pressure option. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is turn your vent to ceiling. And if you're new uh, to working with the Instant Pot, it's really just, there's no fanfare, there's no real clicking or locking in place. Venting, uh, the steam release valve is a little higher. Ceiling, it just drops down a little lower. And now every Instant Pot is starting to be different now. And some Instant Pots, when you lock them into place, I believe will automatically lock it into the ceiling mode. But if you don't have that option, you want to make sure that you put your vent to ceiling. Now, if for any reason you don't have a steam option on your Instant Pot, you can use the pressure cook option, or you may have a button that says manual, and you'll want to set it to high. Now, I'm going to press the steam button, and it's set on high, 
and it's set for two minutes, which is exactly what we want for cleaning the Instant Pot. And there we go. Now I just want to mention, if you choose the steam option and you click that button or press that button and it says low, you can just use this button that says pressure level and just press it once and it should pop it up to high. Well, the Instant Pot steam cleaned with the vinegar for two minutes and now it's switched over to keep warm and we're gonna go ahead and do a quick release to have that wonderful vinegar steam uh, come through our, our uh, ceiling vent. Now, I get very nervous when it comes to moving this from ceiling to venting, so I always like to use a wooden spoon or a wooden rule or something like that. So here we go. Well, all the steam has come through and calmed down and the little red button, which indicates whether it's under pressure or not under pressure, has dropped down. And when the little red button, you might have a silver button, it depends. Uh, when that button drops down, that means that the Instant Pot's no, no longer under pressure. So now we can go ahead and open it. And I always like to open it away from me in case there's any steam that comes out. Look at that, all that steam. And boy, it smells fresh and clean. Well, I let the liner just cool a little bit and I've removed it from the outside of the Instant Pot. And I just wanna make sure that there's nothing in here. It's nice and clean. Water, a little bit of water has accumulated here, or vinegar actually. And I'm just gonna go around and make sure I clean and dry up all of that. And now on the back of your Instant Pot, there's this little reservoir, so to speak, that catches any steam that builds up in terms of you know condensation and whatnot. And so this got a nice little cleaning too. And I'll just go ahead and empty this. So I emptied out the little reservoir, gave it a good rinse, and now I'll just put it aside and let it dry. Well, this liner came beautifully. Any little bits of calcium buildup that I had had on the bottom, there was a little, little bit of discoloration, is completely gone. Now, the Instant Pot folks recommend that if after you do this vinegar treatment, you still see uh, some buildup. You know, maybe when you went through this process, you had a lot of calcium buildup, so you had a lot of that white uh, discoloration, or you had some of the bluing discoloration that after having done this with the vinegar, then you can rinse all the vinegar out, uh, give it a good rinse with water, and then again, uh, as we did with just the basic cleaning, you can take a little bit of that Barkeeper's Friend and a little non-abrasive scrubber and give it a scrub and all of that uh, should lighten up and it should look nice and shiny again. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and empty out this vinegar and give this a really good rinse and then we'll check and see how this lid came out. Well, this came so shiny. I'll take a picture and overlay it so that you can see it. It looks brand new. Well, I'm going to go ahead and put this back into the outer, put the liner back into the outer part of the Instant Pot. And now what I'm going to do, this is cooled down, and I'm going to remove this uh, sealing ring again, and we'll take a, a smell of it and see how it is. Well, it sm smells pretty plain. I'm not picking up any of the garlic from the soup. This is fantastic. This came really really refreshed. Now, if for any reason after this steam clean, your ring, your ceiling ring still has an odor to it, you can just repeat the steps of the basic cleaning. You can go ahead and put it in your dishwasher or you can soak it in your vinegar. Now I'm gonna go rinse the ring and the lid to make sure there's no residual vinegar left on them. Well, I've dried my lid completely, gave it a good shake to make sure I got all the water out. Put, dried the ceiling ring, put the ceiling ring back in, and now I'm going to store it upside down like this so it can further air out. And now we've got a perfectly clean, pristine Instant Pot. Well, if you'd like some recipes to make in this Instant Pot, be sure to click on this video over here where I show you how to cook a whole chicken in the Instant Pot the right way, and how to make creamy mac and cheese, and how to make bone broth. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.